How's everybody doing? Yay. So I'm going to stay stationary. <laughs> as long as you get up in age with CP, you find yourself stay stationary. <laughs> so I'm going to stay stationary. Um, I'm going to get my PowerPoint ready. Thank you, library. And you know, I want to say, you know, thanks to the library. I've been doing events here since 95. <laughs> So I've seen people come and go. I've been in this space many times. So I want to really say thanks to the library for having this space and really being a public space, you know. So thank you. And also, you know, thanks, Kim. You know, our friendship is <laughs> diamonds and gold. <laughs> so thank you. So I, I have a PowerPoint um, in my presentation, and I also going to um, read um, a statement that I did about about the book. So the, the book is entitled "Black Disabled Art History 101." Um, you know, this, this event is, is, you know, people say it, but it's true. There's no books around race, poverty, and disability. Growing up in the 70s, back east, um, I, I didn't see myself until I took it on my own shoulders and, um, you know, and it made people see myself. So I want to give um, a background of, you know, the reason of the book. So, in the 70s and 80s, not seeing myself until, father, until my father's record collection in downstairs in the basement, <laughs> seeing many black disabled musicians like Robert Winters, Walter Jackson, both on crutches, a lot of black and blind musicians then seeing on TV Porgy and Bess. You know, most, most people don't know what, what Porgy and Bess is. Porgy and Bess was an opera, a black opera, you know, done by George Gershwin. And Porgy had a disability. So when I saw that on TV, I was like, Mom, Mom, I'm on TV. <laughs> and this was back in the 70s. My mom comes running out of the kitchen. My mom's cracked up laughing. My mom's like, oh, no, that's Porgy. I was like, Mom, I'm Porgy. I'm Porgy. <laughs> so, you know, that was the first time I saw myself on TV. So, you know, media is really important. And what Port Magazine is doing, what we're doing, it's really important so people can see themselves in a newspaper and on TV. Um, this started my 30 plus years researching, writing, and advocating on blackness and disability. And in the early 90s, I bumped into Tiny MD. I was doing open mic at the Black Repertory in Berkeley. And Tiny and D was on was in the audience, and that's how I got involved with Poor Magazine. And Poor Magazine opened my eyes a little, little bit because I knew a little bit was open my eyes widely about um, you know disabled people are ninety percent living under the poverty line worldwide. Ninety. Ninety. So, you know, Poor Magazine gave me that um, education. I, I have to be honest that I wanted, I wanted to have a black publisher to publish my books. And I got rejections at the rejections at the rejections of this book. And the only two that, that stood up for this book was, a, was two white um, women that, 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 that teaches at the University of San Francisco. They saw the vision of this book 
and they invited me to talk. And since that time, you know, this book is now is published. And also, the two professors um, said, Leo, I used to teach this book. So he used to be a co-teacher at, at the university. So now we're co-teaching the book together at the um, University of San Francisco. So, you know, so I say that because um, all people have a role to play to, to insist of um, black, brown, poor, disabled people that don't have access to those environments. These two, you know, assisted me to bring my knowledge and bring poor magazine knowledge into their spaces. So that's, that's real, how, how you real um, co collaborate together on, on an even level. So it's not like you have a PhD and I'm down there, no, at an even level. So first I want to read the, um, the dedication and the importance of language that, started, that starts in the glossary of this book. The, the, the book has a glossary um, in back of it. And, you know, it has definitions like, you know, what is CP cerebral palsy? You know, so, so um, youth can go to the glossary and look and read the definition. So it's our definition, not the doctors, it's not the medical industry, it's the definition coming from an activist stance. So I want, I want to read the dedication. This book is dedicated to all the disabled children and youth searching for a mirror, for histories, for stories, and for images that say you are not alone. You are being carried by disabled black and brown adults who were once disabled black and brown children and youth. We want you to continue on your path and lead others in new directions. This book is also dedicated to my nieces and nephews, Sasha, Mordecai, Ace, Lightning, Cake, Tibu, and the rest, and my sister. So that's the dedication of the book that starts the book. And I want to read um, at the end of the book, before it goes into the glossary, it has a little, state, a little saying. Historically, the language used to, to discuss disability has pushed disabled children, youth, and adults to hide their full identity and culture. Here I offer some emerging definitions that aim to empower, celebrate human diversity, and transform culture. That being said, language is constantly changing with every generation. It is full, full of richness and can have many meanings and in interpretation. So like all the definitions you will encounter, I invite the reader to think about these terms and definition and talk about and put your own spin on the on them in ways that fit you, your generation, and the people you love. So we're going to, we're going to start with um, with the PowerPoint. I'm going to describe what you see. So the the first the first slide is the cover of the book. Can you see me and what's in the background? 
is on the late Joe Capers. And Joe Capers is really important of the Bay Area. Joe Capers is a blind um, um, music engineer back in the 80s. And Joe Capers had the first um, accessible studio in the 80s in, 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 in Oakland Hill. Oakland Hills, and he produced Tony, 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 and Vogue on um, Digital Underground. And this, and I'm going to tell you a story um, about him later, but yeah, that's him in, in the background. The, the drawing came from a disabled artist, um, um, Bill Buckner. And Bill Buckner is a local disabled artist that did. The, the yellow and green painting back in 1993. This is the publisher. And like I said, they're in San Francisco and they do only children's books. This is my family in Connecticut and myself. More pictures of my family in Connecticut. I'm gonna skip on, and this is the video of Black Disabled Art History 101. Do you know your Black Disabled Art History? Well, it's about time you learn. This is called Black Disabled Art History 101. Sit down and listen, cause there will be a test at the end. Displaying and speaking our history and culture through music, art, and dance. From slavery to homeland security, black disabled artists roots grow deep. However, this garden is starving for recognition. The most famous classical pianist in the mid to late 19th century was a black, blind, artistic slave, Tom Wiggins, AKA Blind Tom, was his slave name. His master used him to make money and left him poor and broken. Horace Pippin, the first black disabled self-taught painter, lost his arm in World War I, using his left arm to prop up his right forearm, crafting his first masterpiece depicting horrors of war. Oh, the price he paid for being black, poor, self-taught, and disabled. Blues is the black anthem. Attracted blind singers and musicians to make a living on the streets. Some made it into recording studios. Blind Willie McTell, born in 1898, played on the streets of Atlanta. Blind Willie Johnson, born around 1902, a street evangelist, stepmother through a lie in young Johnson's eyes, causing blindness. Johnson became the first gospel guitarist to record. He died of ammonia. Hospital refused to admit him due to his blindness. Blind break and blind boons. Birthdays are unknown. Blind John William Boone. Born his own concert company, traveling all over the country, more than 8,000 concerts in the U.S., Canada, Europe, and Mexico. The most 
popular male blues recording artist of the 20s was Blind Lemon Jefferson. He was also a street performer, danced to the blues, rock, jazz, and hip hop vibrations under the wild zappers. A black deaf dance troupe feeling the rhythm from the motherland to the chocolate city. Listen to the melody heartbeat of a black deaf woman, Jay's fingers. Read, I'm a proud black deaf woman. Let's travel to Jamaica, where in the 50s polio affected the island. Skilly, Wise, and Apple are Israel vibration. They met each other at Mona Rehabilitation Center, got kicked out because of their religious belief in Rasta. Homeless, poor, and disabled began to sing on the streets. Now they are the fathers of reggae. Back to Africa, tribal dancing, to the drumming, guitar strumming, and singing of Abdul and Marim, a blind married couple, blending rock, pop, jazz, and hip hop with an international flavor. From Cuba to Asia, India to America, creeping into the hip hop nation. Paraplegic MC, Fizo, Day, Mad One, and the Black Cripple. Lifting the roof of oppression that suffocates the hip hop industry. Throwing away the bling bling to create crip hop, politicalizing our communities. Coming home to the Bay Area to swing from Charles Curtis Blackwell in a batch of jazz poetry celebration. So Get out your number two pencils for your final on Black Disabled Art History 101. So I play that every time I do this um, presentation because it, it, it teaches you the history of um, black disabled artists, not only in the US, but all, all over. So I'm, I'm gonna go through this um, PowerPoint. I'm gonna say only one thing with each slide, because I know time is ticking. There's this Horace Pippin, a black disabled self-taught painter in 1888 through 1946. He was a poor man, and disabled. He was a World War I veteran, lost his arm in the war, and taught himself how to paint with his right arm. The story is in the book, but in the, that's his painting. Um, Curtis, Curtis Blackwell, Charles Curtis Blackwell, is a local jazz poet singer here in Oakland. He kicks butt. This is a graffiti artist back in the 70s in hip hop. He was one of the first graffiti artists in, in the 70s in New York. He painted um, graffiti over at least 80 subway trains in New York. He lost his arm in, in an accident painting. So he taught himself how to paint with his other arm. 
And like I said, he is um, one of the first hip hop graffiti artists of the time. His um, name is um, Taz Two. As a matter of fact, there's a uh, documentary about his work and his importance to hip hop. Um, this is Kilu Nasha. Kilu is a local disabled um, activist of the Black Panthers. Also, she draws um, drawings like this. This is uh, Malcolm X. And she's still here. She lives in Chinatown. So that's Kilu. Al Hippler. Al Hippler was a jazz singer, blind jazz singer back in the, I think, 40s, 50s, 60s. And what, 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 what the story like, I love about him, him is that he um, marched with Martin Luther King. And when he got physicalized, his label, his um, label dropped him because he was marching with Martin Luther King. And um, his songs were, um, you know, on, on the front um, lines when Martin Luther King um, back in the, um, the civil rights movement. Um, Frank, Frank Sinatra picked him back up and gave him um, another label. But, um, yeah, that's Al Hipper. Uh, yeah, this artist is um, Johnny Mae Judson. Johnny Mae Judson was um, a Chicago blues singer. He used to sing on the streets and was also the first female drummer. And he used to write a lot of songs for a lot of black men at the time, but never got, got the bling bling for it. So that's Johnny Mae Dutton. And I want to say that all the artwork in the art in the book is run by on um, Asian Robles, and he kicks butt. So Joe Capers, this is what I'm so proud about. Joe Capers, like I said, was a a blind music engineer in Oakland. You know, on um, started his own home studio and a lot of um, Oakland, hip, Oakland stars that we know today, in Vogue, MC Hammer, did the underground, went through his studio. And what, 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 um, what this story is so important to me because I picked up this story about eight years ago and I, I hadn't let it go. Um, in those eight years we forced uh, Formal mayor to have a Joe Capers month. I said, You're going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and now every August in Oakland is Joe Capers month, which is really important. Um, also, yeah. also, Joe, Joe Capers um, opened up his studio in his home for you know, black and brown youth on the streets. And really taught them how to engineer. I mean, this is before computers, so this is be before our home studios. But yeah, so um, so every August is Joe Capers Month, and also um, we just finished. Me and Naru just finished um, a film about Joe Capers, so that's going to come out soon. So I'm really happy about that. I'm going to read a poem that's in the book. It's until Joe Capers lives on every August. She told me the story, little boy in the bathroom, so many interesting things to play with, just like a kid, went for what mother told him not to do, drain no cleaner in his hands, holes on top. One drop of warm water, then boom! Blind Joe Capers was born. Lost his sight slowly like Ray Charles, 
retreating inward, banging on furniture. Mom bought him drums and, and other instruments that opened his creative musical doors. Black blind with rhythm, no relying on others. This blind man built his own studio, gave musicians of color a place to go, playing jokes on his people, turning off the lights, <laughs> screens in the dark, laughing with a smile so bright. Not everything was right, producing hit after hit for others. Joe Capers experienced the double-edged sword of blind blues musicians. I don't have to explain myself anymore. Give, 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 he kept on giving to the newly blind before ADA and disability rights. They, the saying, a dog is a man's best friend, meant so much more when Joe met Tenor. More than an icy and dog, more like a family member. Man and his best friend buried side by side. Now we remember Black August sounds, gold albums in the opening of J Jam. Every year in the hottest months, Joe Capers will ring through Oak Town. So this this year, so this year when 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 August comes, let's think about Joe Capers. Um, this artist is a um, drummer. Um, this artist is also a transgender. Um, Beta Cleveland. And she's a drummer and also an artist. So this artist was um, a dancer, a tap dancer, and also um, a blues piano player. His nickname was Cripple Clarence Lofton. He was born with a limp. And he also owned a club in Chicago called the Big Apple. In his story, his story is that he froze to death walking home. What? Yeah. So, um, yeah, crippled Clarence Lofton. So this is a local dancer, death dancer, Antoine Hunter. Antoine Hunter has um, a dance company in Oakland. He's deaf, and he's also a poet. So he he, he does he does an international dance um, um, show every year in the mission. So if you on Facebook, check out his Facebook page. Lee Lee Williams Lee Williams was an artist, um, poet, also an actor, musician. He performed up in, on this stage with me in the 90s during my nonprofit when we had um, on disabled people of color doing their artwork. So Lee Williams, he passed away about two years ago. This is Lee, Lynn Manning. Lynn Manning was um, a playwright and a poet, and his last play was on um, Crip Hop Nation. We finally had a chance to collaborate, and he used to live in LA, passed away a couple of years ago, but um, I know Tiny would like this. He used to do theater all throughout the watch, street theater. So he used to go to the corner to do a whole street um, theater production, and uh, did all through the through, through, through watch in LA. So I want to leave with um, 
a video um, was her nickname is Cookie, and she is an actress, a youth actress with with um, Down syndrome, and she did this video to explain about her abilities and her gifts. You don't know I have. I have so smart boy. I have a beautiful spirit. I have a lovely heart. I have a boy that won't. He's quick. When others say I can't, my boy says I can. When I feel like giving up my spirit, don't let me. Every day. I'm challenged. I'm not scared. I'm just born with it. I have courage. But things don't work for me. I don't give up. I keep going. I try harder. I focus better. And after I get it, I got it. I know I can do whatever I put in my mind to. You know what I have? I have down straight away. It is no stopping me. We're stopping you. So she she is in the book. She's the last page in the book, and I'm so I'm so happy for her. She, she's really kicking ass, and um, yeah, I want to um, end with a poem that I just wrote a couple of days ago. It's, it's going to be a, a, a collaboration by three black disabled men, Keith Jones, myself. And Emmett Thrower did the video. The video's not done. Um, Keith Jones did the beat. I don't have the beats with me, but I'm going to read the poem. It's called Black Disabled Man. Head hang down low 
Yeah, I know. Nobody cares about you. Sit down. Let's talk about your roots. We created the blues. Blind black men could not even afford shoes. We always created our own rules. Got kicked out of church. We took it to the porch. Guitar strap with a tin cup. Many told us to shut up. Blues are the roots and those leaves are hip hop. Billy Holiday sung about strange fruits. Jesse Washington lynched and kicked by white men's boots. Black disabled men still black and blue. Stealing our identification from Jim Crow to hip hop appropriation. Dumping Jimmy Brooks, a.k.a. Drake, out of the wheelchair. Black disabled men, don't avoid me, come here. I'm pumping quip hop in your ear. Queen self-worth, this is your rebirth. Life is hell on this earth, only if you don't lift a finger. Eye to eye, now you see your brother. She wanted the best for you, your mother. I know you want a partner, but you got to love yourself first. There goes your mirror. But it's not only about you. Those young ones will be limping and wheeling in your shoes. Black disabled man, you survive. Now you are an elder. What will you leave behind? Live today knowing people are looking at you. I know some days you will have the blues. Just take a deep breath and say, hmm, black disabled man, just remember where you came from. Kim?